एंटी फॉस्फोलिपिड सिंड्रोम फॉस्फोलिपिड सिंड्रोम सो एंटी फॉस्फोलिपिड सिंड्रोम इज एन ऑटो इम्यून डिजीज एसोसिएट विद फ्रीकुंट क्लॉटिंग इन आर्टरीज वेन्स और मिसकैरेज द क्लॉटिंग रिजल्ट फ्राम द प्रेजेंस ऑफ प्रोटीन इन द ब्लड कॉल्ड एज एंटी फॉस्फोलिपिड एंटीबॉडीज फॉर्म अगेंस्ट द पर्सन ओन टिश्यू इन सर्कुलेशन दीज ऑटो एंटीबॉडीज आर एबल टू इंटरफेयर विद सम मेकेजम ऑफ कॉगुलेशन लीडिंग टू क्लॉटेशन एंड थ्रॉम्बोसिस virtually any system can be affected including the peripheral artery uh, deep vein thrombosis and uh, cardiovascular disease cause stroke thrombocytopenia pregnancy loss and there may be history of recurrent fetal loss at any gestation late loss of morphologically normal fetus is usually due to placental infarction and should also lead to test of aps pulmonary embolism pulmonary hypertension levator reticularis persistent red or blue pattern of the skin trunk and myocardial infarction retinal thrombosis levator reticularis in the upper extremities which is developed as a petechia in the classical lacy reticular pattern and evolve as confluent non blanching and slightly raised papillary crash in the uh, same regular pattern common skin manifestation may present with aps including re- levator reticularis purpura skin ulceration and necrosis parmer levator reticularis is associated with anti phospholipid antibody syndrome may range from a lacy flat reticulated pattern on the palm to a non confluent non blanching slightly raised rash secondary to extravasation of arteries and plasma uh, levator reticularis uh, could be a primary or idiopathic or it could be a secondary one levator reticularis without the presence of underlying disease is thought to be usually spontaneous arterial vasospasm which It decreases the oxygen and blood supply and flow causing the tissue hypoxia and increase deoxygenation of the venous blood and despite many potential causes levator reticularis is still valuable signs primarily or idiopathic levator reticularis is a diagnosis of exclusion and other causes should be ruled out first levator reticularis has been shown to have a significant relationship with anti phospholipid syndrome in absence of sle with up to 40% of the patient with levator reticularis as the first sign of underlying uh, prothrombotic disorder levator reticularis in patient with sle has been shown to be significant predictor of development of neuropsychiatric symptom and sle macular bluish uh, purple discoloration of the skin that has a net or lace like appearance cause primary or idiopathic levator reticularis elderly people secondary uh, levator reticularis hypercoagulable hematological state anti phospholipid syndrome Sneddon syndrome, cryoglobulinemia, multiple myeloma, polycythemia (DVT, TTP), vasculitis, connective tissue disorders, embolization, vessel wall uh, deposition, amantadine adverse effect, and quinine adverse effect. Most frequently in APS, uh, the blood clotting uh, happens and pregnancies are lost because of the blood uh, clots from the placenta. and uh, starve the baby for nutrition the treatment is due to anticoag uh, is anticoagulation in pregnancy the heparin is used this gives the fetus 80 to 90% chance of survival however the pregnancies are not normal normal pregnancy is 40 week in aps it is more common to deliver baby between 13 and 35 weeks between 3 to 4 pounds the heparin protects the placenta partially but not fully so that the baby gets uh, enough nutrition to survive longer in the uh, mother treatment for the people who clot can also uh, be used of uh, warfarin this medication is commonly used in people with strokes and coronaries anti phospholipid uh, antibody syndrome uh, induces a series of symptoms as follows repeat clotting in the veins antibody test has to be positive strongly and the above sin terms are specifically characteristic of apc syndrome in 1900 uh, certain people had false positive of syphilis this data was curiosity without the clinical importance at that time but rediscovered in 1940 and 1950 it was realized that the false positive syphilis test has something to do with lupus today although known as a clue diagnosis a false positive syphilis test is not sufficient for the diagnosis of lupus or apc a phospholipid um, is a type of fat that contains phosphate and the lipid cardiolipin is a type of phospholipid 
the cardio term in the cardio ribbon is nothing to do with the heart rather it originated from syphilis test which is used to uh, beef heart in the original test so the antibodies uh, may be in the blood stream for years before uh, anything is seen some people have a lifetime chance of having antibody but show no symptoms there are still unanswered questions uh, it has to be infection and uh, aps can cause uh, various other diseases that has just yet to be uh, antiphospholipid syndrome is a disorder that manifests clinically as a recurrent venous or arterial thrombosis fetal loss the characteristic laboratory finding in aps include the persistently elevated levels of antibodies directed against the membrane and ionic phospholipid and cardiolipin antibody the antiphospholipid serin predominantly beta 2 glycoprotein 1 or the evidence of circulating anticoagulant this was first described in the patient with sle but now recognized both in the patient of aps does not fulfill the diagnostic criteria for sle so the diagnosis is based on the venous artery and small vessel thrombosis and pregnancy features other features including thrombocytopenia hemolytic anemia levodopa reticularis heart valve disease hypertension leg ulcers although the clinical features of the primary and the sle associated aps are similar and the antibody specific in the same time the distinction is important in the patient with primary aps and should not be labeled as having loose the pathogenesis of the aps involve uh, as a cofactor of beta 2 glycoprotein in aps associated fetal loss there is typically a massive infarction and thrombosis of the placenta and deciduous vessels probably secondary to the spiral uh, vasculopathy the platelet deposition and the post, uh, prostenoid imbalance may be implicated in the similar way to preeclampsia many of the adverse outcome described are the end results of the defective or abnormal placentation and these findings support the placental failure being mechanism in which the apl are associated to late loss firm diagnosis of the aps requires two or more of the positive finding of the la and uh, cl at least 6 week apart plus at least one of the clinical criteria which was described lupus anticoagulant is a misnomer coined because of it prolongs the coagulation time in vitro it is detected by prolongation of uh, activated partial thromboplastin time or dilute restal viper venom time drvvt Cardiolipin antibodies are measured using uh, commercially available uh, ELISA kits. The risk of thrombosis is exacerbated by hypercoagulable pregnancy state pre-existing thrombocytopenia may worsen. The risk of miscarriages uh, second and third trimester fetal death and preeclampsia IUGR and placental abruption are increased establishing the diagnosis uh, establishing the casualty for the first trimester losses. and difficult since the risk of the miscarriage is high the normal population the apl are more common in women suffering from three or more of the first trimester miscarriages than in those with first or two trimester miscarriages the fetal death in aps is typically preceded by iugr and oligohydropnea the risk of the fetal loss is directly related to antibody titer particularly igg or acl all the many women with the history of recurrent loss may have igm bodies pre-pregnancy management the woman with the history of thrombosis and recurrent miscarriage and intrauterine fetal death or severe early onset of preeclampsia or iugr should be screened for the presence of la or acl the detailed history for the circumstances of the fetal loss is essential to exclude the other causes of late miscarriages such as the cervical incompetence or idiopathic premature labor and the presence of apl and uh, constitutive diagnosis of aps unless the clinical features are suggestive care of the pregnant woman with aps should be multidisciplinary in the centers of expertise of the caring for those with high risk pregnancies aspirin inhibits thromboxane and may reduce the risk of the vascular thrombosis and there are many non randomized studies suggesting that the low dose aspirin is effective and it can prevent the pregnancy loss in experimental apc mice Aspirin is a logical treatment in those with APLs but no clinical features of it. 
Most centers now advocate the treatment with low dose aspirin for all women with APS prior to conception in the belief that the placental damage uh, may occur early in gestation and the aspirin may prevent the failure of placation. Women with APS and the previous thromboembolism are extremely high risk of the further thromboembolism in pregnancy with the purpurum and should be sh- should receive the anti uh, antenatal thromboprophylaxis with uh, high dose prophylactic dose of low molecular weight heparin. Many of these women are lifelong anticoagulant therapy with warfarin. The change from warfarin to heparin should be achieved prior to six weeks gestation to avoid the warfarin embryopathy. A few women with cerebral arterial thrombosis due to APS on uh, no longer warfarin may experience a transient ischemic symptom when low molecular weight heparin is substituted for warfarin. If these do not improve on the higher dose of low molecular weight heparin, the reintroduction of warfarin is justified to prevent maternal sp- Opinion is divided upon the best therapy of those with recurrent pregnancy loss but without a history of thromboembolism. The treatment with high dose steroid to suppress the LA and ACL in combination with aspirin is no longer recommended because of the maternal side effects such as prolonged high dose steroid. So if there is no history of thrombosis, aspirin should be given previous thrombosis, maintenance warfarin transfer aspirin to low molecular weight heparin not on warfarin, uh, aspirin, uh, OD should be given preconception to commence low molecular weight heparin once pregnancy is confirmed. Increase low molecular weight heparin to BD 16 to 20 weeks. Uh, recurrent miscarriages, uh, no anticoagulant therapy, aspirin 75 mg OD from preconception, prior miscarriages with aspirin alone. A late fetal loss, neonatal death, or adverse outcome, aspirin 75 mg OD preconception, low molecular weight win. Any additional benefit from the heparin must be balanced against the risk of the heparin induced osteoporosis and the cost of inconvenience of the daily injections. In women with recurrent miscarriages but without a history of thrombosis, there is evidence to support the use of uh, no therapy aspirin alone and aspirin with low molecular weight heparin. A pragmatic approach to offer the aspirin alone particularly if the history is less than three miscarriages and this miscarriages occur despite aspirin therapy to offer low molecular variation. Antithrombotic strategies vary in different centers around the world. Low molecular weight heparin is given to prophylactic doses 40 mg OD. Immunosuppression with azathioprine, IV immunoglobulin and plasmapheresis has all been trimed. The numbers treated do not allow to firm conclusion regarding the efficacy. Close fetal monitoring is essential. Uterine uh, artery Doppler waveform analysis 22-24 week gestation helps to predict the high risk pregnancies. Monthly growth scans are performed. High risk women require closer surveillance with regular blood pressure check and urine analysis to detect the early onset of preeclampsia. Such intensive monitoring allows for the timely delivery which may improve the outcome. Women with long-term warfarin treatment may recommence uh, the postpartum and low molecular weight heparin is discontinued when the international normalization ratio is more than 2. Women with the previous thrombosis should receive the postpartum heparin or warfarin for 6 weeks. Women without the previous thrombosis should receive postpartum heparin for at least 5 weeks, 5 days to 6 weeks depending on the presence of other factors. Thank you.